Hey, what's up everyone? John here with Web Dev for You, here to help you build awesome websites without code in Webflow. So I've decided to bring the interactions back. Uh, they're very popular uh, from my profile. They get cloned a lot. Uh, so I decided to bring it back. I'll be doing a few a week and, and just uh, showcasing how to create these little uh, micro interactions. I'm gonna be calling it micro interactions because some of them are just small buttons or some cool card effects that can be created uh, in Webflow. So I'll go ahead and get started on how to build this uh, portfolio button animation on hover. So we see we have this button called view work. And when we hover, we have this little arrow icon that kind of shifts from the bottom left to the bottom right. So it's a quick little interaction. So I'll go ahead and jump in. All right, so here I am in Webflow. So I'll go ahead and start with a section. We'll give it the class name 155 section because this is, this is technically interaction number 155. So I'm just continuing from the daily interactions there. We'll set the min height to 100 VH, set the flex to center center. So we'll place the button in the center. I'll go ahead and add a link block and we'll call this uh, 155 link block wrapper. And let's go ahead and style the text right away. So I've gone ahead and installed the font called DM Sans. I like that font. So if you go to project settings and you go to fonts, you can install a Google font. So I went ahead and installed um, DM Sans for this project. Um, it's just a font I like using. Um, so we'll go ahead and on to the link uh, block wrapper. We'll go ahead and for the style, we'll remove the underline there by clicking the X. We'll set the text to black and we'll make the text capitalized and the letter spacing of two. Okay, so that's just styling the link block so we don't have to style the text later. So uh, now I'll go ahead and add a div block inside of this link block and I'll call this 155 button wrapper. And in here we'll add the text. So I'll say uh, text block, we'll add a text block. And as you can see, the text is styled. So that's why when we added the styles to the link block, it applied it, applied it to all children elements inside of it. Uh, and that just saved us a little bit of time. So this text is DM Sans. Or actually, no, it's uh, we wanna change the, the font here to uh, DM Sans right here. Perfect, and we'll make the font weight medium. Cool. So any, ch any text inside of the link block is inheriting this uh, this typography. So DM sans medium size 14 is okay. Line height of 20 color black, uh, no text decoration. So no underline. So before it was like this. So we don't want an underline and a letter spacing of two. So we can adjust the letter spacing here and then all caps. Great. So now I'll say view work. That'll be the text. And then we have the button wrapper here and we're going to add some padding to the button wrapper or a border first. So we'll go down to borders. We'll set the border to 100 pixels. So we have a border on the left and the, and the right, or the radius. Let me add a solid border. We'll make it two. And then we'll set the radius to 100. So it has that pill kind of shape so that it's rounded on the left and the right. All right. So those are the border properties, uh, radius of 100 pixels, uh, solid, two pixels, and black. Now let's add some padding to the left and the right. So I'll add maybe 20 pixels of padding and we'll set a specific height to the button. We'll say 34 and we'll set it to a display setting of flex and center, center. All right, looks good. So the reason we're giving it a height of 34 is so that we can set this circle to 34 pixels. And we need to use pixels for this because we're gonna be moving elements uh, 100% uh, to, to the top and bottom, or to the top, and it requires a specific pixel value. So, uh, so great, yeah, so we have this button here. That looks good. Now let's go ahead and add the circle with the arrow. So uh, in the link block wrapper, I'm gonna go ahead and add a div block, and I'm gonna call this 155 circle wrapper. Okay, and now let's go to the link block and let's give it a flex setting of flex, horizontal, center, and justify left, or justify start. All right, and for the circle wrapper, we'll go back here. We'll give it a specific width and height 
of 34 by 34 so it'll have the same height as the left uh, button we'll give it a border of 2 solid border of 2 and to make it a perfect circle we'll say 50 percent so we have a perfect circle uh, so now for this button wrapper I can just give it maybe 20 pixels of margin from the right or maybe, maybe 10 okay and awesome so now we can add the arrow inside of here so we'll add an image element so I'll hit command K add an image and then I do have an image uh, that or an arrow image that I can go ahead and drop in so let me just find that real quick uh, let's see so I'll go ahead and open the assets panel and we'll drag and drop that arrow in there cool so I'll go ahead and replace this image with this arrow and let's call it arrow I or 155 arrow icon and I got this arrow from majestic icons you can uh, clone it into Figma and you can get a copy and it'll clone it right into your Figma and then you have all these icons and you can export it so I can select it export it as SVG and then just export it here and it'll download it onto my computer okay so for the circle wrapper let's give it a display setting of flex center center so that arrow is right in the center nice and the other property we want to add to the circle wrapper is uh, an overflow of hidden so or actually before I do that let me just demonstrate so I'll go ahead and copy this arrow icon so we have two um, so actually let's see here um, yeah so for the circle wrapper we want to give it a flex setting of vertical instead of um, horizontal so they stack up on top of each other and just taking a look here yeah and then we want to give the arrow icon a width of 34 as well and okay and then for the circle wrapper now we want to give it a display setting of overflow none so we don't see the second arrow underneath and let's set the justify here on the circle wrapper to top okay that makes more sense yeah so we have both arrows just stacked on top of each other okay and I'll, I'll review this at the end because it might be a lot at the moment but um, there we have that so to the arrow icon let's also add some padding maybe four so it's a bit smaller in here and that's it so essentially what we did so to the circle wrapper let's go ahead and review this we added a display setting of flex vertical and then uh, align center and justify top then we gave it an overflow of hidden and what that does is it allows me to have an arrow icon right below the first one but we don't see it so we have the first arrow icon and as you can see the, the second arrow icon is right below it uh, so all we're going to do now is animate the arrows moving up and down and we'll animate a few colors as well um, so i'll go ahead and select the link block wrapper let's go to interactions click the plus i'll say mouse hover and we'll start an animation. I'll click the plus and I'll call this um, 155 uh, button hover in. And then what we want to do here, let me just double check this, is we want to, yeah, first we're going to give a background color to the circle wrapper, or actually first initially let's do that here. Let's give it a background color of white uh, because we're going to transition the color and we want to start with the base color of white and that just makes the color transition a bit smoother okay so now let me go back into the interaction and we'll select the circle wrapper we'll click the plus we'll say background color and we'll start it with a color of white and it's just here in an in interaction something I've noticed is is if you don't start if you don't set the initial state of the color it, the color transition isn't as smooth so we want to change we want to set the color to white and then set it as the initial state so we want to click this button here under timing and then we can uh, add some interaction so then we can change the background color and I'm just going to change it here to any color maybe like a bright yellow yeah it looks cool something like that 
nice so we have that color and then um, yeah that looks that looks good and then we can move the arrow icon so I'll select this icon and then I'll move it negative uh, 100% on the Y axis so it moves up and yeah, I think that's it negative Y so let's see okay so we have that awesome and we'll just start it with the background color so as you can see the arrow moves up perfect okay uh, and what else do we need to do here then re we'll remove the border color as well so I'll select the circle wrapper and for the border color we'll say we'll just change it to white so it removes it cool all right so I'll select all these three change the duration to 0.2 and the easing to ease okay so I hover and there we go looks good so I'll save this and then we'll start an animation here I'll duplicate this and I'll say 155 button hover out. I'll delete this initial state and then we'll just change the colors back to their original color uh, states. We'll move this back to 0% and the border color here will be black. Cool. So if I hover, there we go. That's it. And now I just have to rotate the button. So I'll select the circle wrapper and we'll under two two and three two D and three D transformed. I'll click the plus. I'll say rotate and I'll rotate it forty five degrees. And there we go. That is it. Uh, so I know it, it seems like I went over a lot of steps, uh, but to create this button, you do need to kind of put specific elements in div blocks and then give certain div blocks different properties. So we started with the link block because it allows us to link the element to like a specific page. Then we added a button wrapper, um, and this one was for this, this little pill button with the text inside of it. It has a flex setting of flex, center, center. Then we added the text, and we styled the link block wrapper uh, there so that this text inherits the text property from this link block wrapper. And we wanna call this 155 uh, button text as well. Give it a class name. Then we added a circle wrapper. We set it a uh, flex setting of flex, vertical, center, and justify start. Uh, with a 34 pixels in height, 34, 34 pixels in width and height, overflow of hidden. Then we added the arrow icon with a width of 34 pixels, padding of four, and we added it twice. And then we selected the link block wrapper, went to interactions, created a hover in interaction, initially set the background color of the circle wrapper to white, then changed it to yellow, then moved the uh, arrow icon up negative 100%, and we changed the border color to, to white here um, so that it, it looks like it's disappearing. We can also set it to transparent, which would, would have the same effect. Yeah, so you can set it to transparent here, and that would work as well. So I can do that here as well. Um, yeah, so then we created the hover out, and here I'll just change. Yeah, and then we changed the background color back to white. We moved the arrow icon back to 0% on the Y axis. And then we change the border color back to white to reset the animation. And that's it. So that's how we get this interesting little button. Cool. So hopefully uh, that was clear. Um, I did get inspired by this website here. It's called Series 8. And they have this little icon here where you hover and the button uh, kind of moves there. Uh, yeah. So that is it for this micro interaction. It's interaction number 155. Uh, thanks for watching. And if you have any questions, feel free to post them in the comment section below and I'll be happy to answer, answer it. Uh, so again, this project is clonable. Um, you can just click here to clone and it'll take you to my uh, web, Webflow profile and you can clone it, use it for your own project. You can just copy this link block wrapper and paste it into your project and you can use it uh, for, for your projects and link it out to, to anything. All right, so the link can be found below as well uh, to this project and uh, a link to get started with Webflow as well is in the description area below. Uh, so thanks again for watching and I'll see you in the next video tutorial. Thank you.